Welcome. My name is Hemant Kaidani. I am a senior architect in the technical marketing group at VMware. In this video, I will show you how to install and configure vCenter Operations Manager, which is part of the vCenter Operations Management Suite. The vCenter Operations Manager is packaged as a vApp, which means it consists of two virtual machines that work together. The installation itself has four different steps. In the first step, uh, you have to prepare your environment. Make sure you have all the prerequisites that are taken care of. Then we actually deploy the, the vApp. After the deployment is complete, we will do the post-install configuration to make sure it points to the right vCenter servers. And finally, we'll apply the licensing. So let's begin with the first step, which is the preparation step. As part of the preparation step, you have to make sure that you have the right ESX and vCenter versions. The vCenter Operations Manager vApp installs on vCenter Server 4.0 Update 2 and above, and also needs ESX Server 4.0 and above. You can access vCenter Operations Manager through two different user interfaces. You can access it through a browser, or you can access it from vSphere client. In both cases, you need to have Internet Explorer 7.0 or above and Firefox 3.0 or above on your machine. In addition to this, you need to have few uh, ports that need to be open. So for example, you need to have port number 22 open for SSH access, and you also need to have ports 443 for secure HTTP and port number 80 open so that you can access the uh, virtual appliances. The two VMs that are part of the vCenter Operations vApp also need to talk to each other. Uh, they use port number 1194 to set up a tunnel between the two. The next thing that you need to do is configure IP pools in your environment. Now the term IP pools is kind of a misnomer. You don't really create a pool of IP addresses. What you are really doing is setting up some network metadata so that the vCenter operations manager VMs can get the subnet, the gateway information. If you need DNS and proxy settings, you can capture that. So to do that, launch the vSphere client and click on the IP pools tab. Once you are in the IP pools tab, we're going to click on Add, give it a name. I'm going to just call it VCOps5. Need to provide the subnet. So this is going to be, in my case, it's 192.168.110.0. The gateway is 192.168.0. The most important thing to remember here is not to check this enable IP pool checkbox. Again, this has to be left blank. I'm going to now go to the association screen and associate the IP pool with the network that we are going to use. Click OK. And you should have your IP pools created. Once the IP pool is created, we are now ready to deploy the vApp. To deploy the vApp, make sure you have downloaded the OVA file. In this case, I have downloaded the OVA file. On some browsers, the OVA file may be named as a .tar file. So in that case, you need to rename it as a .ova file. Go to the file menu and click deploy OVF template. I'm going to browse through the downloads folder where I have downloaded that. Select the OVA file, open it, and then click Next. Here you can see the OVA template details. As you can see, this particular vApp consists of two different VMs, and it's going to take about 336 gigabytes of disk space on disk when it is thick provisioned. It is strongly recommended that you use thick provisioning 
for good performance. If you use thin provisioning uh, in production environment, your pro performance is not going to be acceptable. And click Next. Make sure you accept the license agreement. Click Next. Provide the name to your vCenter Operations Manager instance. I'm going to leave it at the default name. Click Next. Here you can select three different deployment configurations. The out-of-the-box configuration is the small configuration, which requires four vCPUs and 16 gigs of memory for the vApp. You can always go to the medium configuration, which uses eight vCPUs and 25 gigs of memory. The small configuration can be used for up to 1500 VMs. The medium configurations, you can use that if you need bet, you know, between 1500 to 3000 VMs. Or you can choose the large configuration if your deployment has more than 3000 VMs. vCenter Operations Manager today supports up to 6000 powered on VMs and 8000 registered VMs. The large configuration needs 16 vCPUs and 34 gigs of memory. Note that the resources are not split equally between the two VMs. The analytics VM, the second VM, usually uh, takes up more resources than the first VM. In case you choose the small or the medium configuration and you want to ramp up to a larger configuration, it's very easy. All you need to do is change the CPU and memory for the two VMs and reboot the vApp and the vCenter Operations Manager vApp will automatically tune itself to adjust to the larger configuration. I'm going to select the small configuration here, click Next, and use the, the same uh, cluster here, Renpol HQ, click Next. Again, I'm going to select the default resource pool configuration, click Next. Now if you've got to select the storage space, as I mentioned before, you have to use uh, thick provisioning for better performance. In this demo environment, I'm going to just go ahead and choose, if you don't have enough storage space, you are going to see this insufficient disk space warning at the bottom here. I'm going to click Next here. It's automatically selected thin provisioning because I didn't have enough space. You do have a choice to select lazy zeroing or eager zeroing options with thick provisioning. It's recommended that you use eager zeroed so that all the uh, storage I.O. blocks are zeroed before you actually uh, start using the vCenter Operations Manager vApp. Click Next. In this case, you need to select your destination network. So there is a drop-down box here that lets you change the network in case you are using a different one. Make sure you are using the network that you configured as part of your IP pool configuration. Click Next. Here you get to choose the IP allocation policy. It is recommended that you use, you use the fixed IP addresses. Transient is absolutely not recommended. And it's also recommended that if you have chosen DHCP, you don't change it to fixed IP after the deployment. In case you have to do that, I recommend that you either do a new installation or you can uh, talk to our support who can help you with that, uh, changing your IP address configuration here. Never change the IP address from the blue console screens of the virtual appliances. Always use the administrative UI to change the IP addresses for this, this VMs. Click Next. This is where you get to choose your time zone. So I'm going to choose my time zone here and choose the IP addresses for your environment. So now we need to make sure we select the, the correct time zone and then provide the IP addresses for the two VMs. So there we go, we have the two IP addresses. Click Next. 
So at this point, you can see the, the summary of the VApp that's going to be deployed. I'm going to just click Finish to let it go through. Once you click Finish, you will see the small dialog box here which says it's deploying vCenter Operations Manager. At this point, it is going to take several minutes to deploy this. Uh, for the purposes of this video, we are going to fast forward it and we'll start once the deployment is done. Now you can see that the vApp is now deployed. You can see the completed status here. You can click on the vCops vApp. Click the summary tab. You should see that the vApp is ready to be powered on. If you click on the virtual machines tab, you can see that there are two VMs that are part of this particular vApp. Now, as a best practice recommendation, make sure that you always start or stop your vApp. Do not start or stop individual virtual machines. I'm going to go ahead and power on the vApp by clicking on this power on tab here. You'll notice that the analytics VM starts first and the UI VM follows. It may take a few minutes to power on the virtual machines. Okay, now that the vApp is powered on, you can see the status, both the VMs have been powered on, the completed status at the bottom. And in the vApp status, it should see available. So now we are ready to do our third step, which is the configuration of the vApp. So you can just click on this available and it will take you through the vCenter Operations Manager UI. The first time around, it will automatically recognize that you have not configured the vCenter Operations Manager. So it will automatically take you to the administration UI. The default password is uh, admin can log in and it's going to start the initial setup wizard. The initial setup wizard is going to go through four different steps. First and the foremost, it's going to force you to change the password for the admin account as well as the root account for the virtual appliances. So I'm going to set the passwords first. Click Next. Now that the passwords have been set, you need to specify a vCenter server to collect the data from. The display name is just a descriptive name that you can use. So in this case, I'm going to just point the name that I have for the local environment. The vCenter server address is the IP address or the fully qualified domain name for the vCenter server where you want to collect the data from. You need to provide a registration user, the one with administrative privileges, so that it can collect the information from the vCenter server. The collection user and password is optional. In case you want to set up another read-only user that can collect the data, collect the metrics from vCenter server, you can use that. Otherwise, it's really optional. At this point, it is going to validate the connection to vCenter server, and this may take a few minutes. You will get a security alert asking you to uh, verify the authent authenticity of your vCenter server. Just go ahead and click yes. At this point, vCenter Operations Manager is going to detect plugins for any existing vCenter Operations Manager 1.0 or Capacity IQ 1.5 plugins. If you have those plugins installed, vCenter Operations Manager allows you to import data from those existing instances. 
You can only import data from one Capacity IQ instance and one vCenter Operations Manager in system. And that particular vCenter server has to be the first vCenter server that gets registered if you want to import the data. In this case, you can see that vCenter Operations Manager has not detected any plugins. So we are ready to move on to the next step. I'm going to click Next. vCenter Operations Manager will also check for whether the vCenter server is part of linked mode. If it is part of the linked mode, it will then point you to the other vCenter servers in the linked mode configuration. At this point, you can actually decide to either choose a subset of vCenter servers that you want to use for monitoring, or you can set up and register all the other vCenter server instances with vCenter Operations Manager. vCenter Operations Manager does not communicate over the linked mode. This is just a setup benefit that gives you the list of other vCenter servers that are part of the linked mode configuration. At this point, we are ready to finish our VCOps Manager configuration. It is going to register itself with the vCenter server, and this may again take a few minutes. Okay, now that we have registered the vCenter operations, we are back to the administration UI. At this point, you can continue to register new vCenter server instances if you have them. Before we go ahead and use vCenter Center Operations Manager, the last step that we have to do is now apply licensing. User needs to have a valid license to access the vCenter Operations UI. We do this thing from vCenter Server. We go back to vSphere Client and go to the Licensing tab. So this point here, we're going to click on the asset, and you can see that there is a vCenter Operations Manager instance that is unlicensed. I'm going to just double click on this and assign a new license here. Enter the license key, so you should have your license key at this point. So you type your license key, go ahead and click OK. You can see that the license key has been assigned, I'm going to click OK. Now that your product is licensed, you are ready to go ahead and use so this point. We're just going to go to the, the regular vCenter Operations Manager UI, and you should be directed to the vSphere UI. Click Login, and you should be into the vCenter Operations Manager UI at this point, ready to use your product. So hopefully you find this short video on installing and configuring vCenter Operations Manager useful. For further details, please go to the vCenter Operations Management Suite products page on vmware.com. Thank you very much.